Unit 4, Sustainability of Ecosystems, Chapter 8, Shifting Perspective on Ecosystems. Shifting Perspectives on Ecosystems. Vernal pools are a type of wetland that are usually found in or near forests and do not have permanent streams or water flowing into or out of them. What kind of organisms might be found in and around vernal pools? Well, if we look at the picture, we can see ferns, trees, snails, um, in the water, we could possibly see crustaceans, as well as insects, frogs, you could see salamanders, turtles, amphibians, snakes, birds, and you could see other mammals. How our e understanding of ecosystems has changed. Throughout history, humans have depended on the Earth systems, including ecosystems, for resources such as water, food, and raw material, for energy, shelter, and clothing. Many people took the attitude that the supply of resources was endless. Conservationists and environmental scientists have warned us that humans are overusing, overexploiting, destroying the resources that humans need to survive. What are some historical examples of, over, of overuse of resources? So we could use examples like trees for firewood or commercial purposes until there's no more trees left, so clear cutting. This can lead to soil erosion. And loss of forests habitat. Mining for resource underground, coal or different ores until none are left. Fishing for cod and other species until there are few left and the population collapse. Trapping of beavers until few are left and the population collapses. Ecosystem services. The ecosystem services are benefits S sustainable ecosystem provides that are experienced by living organisms including humans. Ecosystem services are the natural result of all the activities that occur in the biosphere. Without sustainable ecosystems, Earth would lose most of the services that ecosystems provide. So they provide things like forests take up CO2, and then they release oxygen. Other things, um, they also maintain our soil fertility. Um, they help our, water shout, our watersheds. Um, they clean and filter water. Um, they also maintain organisms necessary for pest control, pollination, waste management, and other processes. They cycle nutrients and balance the growth and decomposition. Um, they don't only provide habitat for 2 million uh, unknown species on Earth. They are also a source of beauty and spirituality for many people. 
Ecosystems provide humans with food. Timber and fossil fuels. Plants from ecosystems are used for medicinal purposes. Ecosystem services provided by forests. Forests supply trees that are needed for the manufacture of wood and paper products. Forests influence climate because they take in large amounts of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere during photosynthesis. Forests reduce erosion in watersheds. Forests provide habitat for thousands of species. A watershed is an area of land over which runoff drains into the body of water. The graph shows the difference between a forested and deforested area in filtering nitrates from runoff. Ecosystem uh, services provided by wetlands. Wetlands are areas that cover are covered by water for part or all of the year. Wetlands cover about 6% of the Earth's surface. About 24% of the world's wetlands are in Canada. What ecosystem services do wetlands provide? Well, wetlands store water, which reduces the risk of flooding and provides habitat for commercially imported species of fish and shellfish. Plants, turtles, snakes, mink, and thousands of other organisms live in wetlands. For juvenile animals, our young animals, wetlands are a protective environment in which they can grow and develop. Every spring and fall, migrating birds also use wetlands to feed and rest. About 30% of birds in North America stop in wetlands throughout Canada. Besides providing habitat for many organisms, wetlands perform another important ecosystem service. The plants that grow in them filter sediment and pollution from water. Ecosystem services provided by insects. Insects, such as beetles and bees, pollinate plants. In the wild and in agricultural fields, fruit and seed production are much higher when plants are pollinated by insects. Cross-pollination by insects assists the production of one-third of our food. What is the difference between cross-pollination and self-pollination? Well, a male pollen from one flower fertilizes a female ovary in another flower of the same species is known as cross-pollination. Most plants rely on animals to move pollen from one plant to another. Self-pollination is a process in which flowers can pollinate themselves or another flower from the same plant. What is colony collapse disorder? Colony collapse disorder is when only frail young worker bees and the queen bee remain in the hive. All the mature workers are gone and the young worker bees and the queen bee cannot maintain the hive and it collapses. Beauty and spirituality in sustainable ecosystems. Canada's indigenous people have had a long, rich, and complex spirituality tied closely to the ecosystems they occupy. Artistic expressions of ecosystems are meaningful and spiritual to some people. What emotions does the painting on the right invoke? That's something to think about, and your answer um, depends on you and your experiences with art. Recreation opportunities as ecosystem services. Ecotourism is a form of tourism that is sensitive to the health of the ecosystem and involves recreational activities provided by sustainable ecosystems. Ecotourism is a natural-based, sustainable form of tourism that is now a multi-billion dollar industry worldwide. What are examples of recreational activities that our sustainable ecosystems provide? So these can include things like camping, canoeing, snowshoeing, fishing, kayaking.
The concept of connectivity. A collection of links and the relationship between ecosystems are that are separated geographically is called uh, connectivity. As shown in the graph below, populations of many aerial inse insectivores, birds, that breed in Canada have declined since the 1980s. Why might bird populations be declining in Canada? While well, scientists are not sure exactly why the, the populations of aerial insectivores birds are declining, because the birds are migratory, um, it is difficult to determine exactly what causing what is causing the decline. Disrupting con connectivity, salmon help to keep temperate for rainforest in British Columbia healthy. How can this be? Explain what is occurring in the flowchart. Well, first, our salmon hatch in freshwater streams in temperate forests. Then, the salmon spend their adult lives in the specific ocean, picking up nutrients from the marine ecosystem. Then, salmon return to their birthplace to spawn. Four, bears fresh uh, fish spawning salmon, taking their bodies into the forest to eat them. Nutrients released into the salmon's decaying bodies are absorbed by plants in the forest. Biodiversity and sustainability. New species of organisms are frequently being discovered. Scientists have identified about 2 million species, and they estimate there are 5 million to 100 million species on Earth. Biodiversity includes the number and variety of organisms found in a specific region. What factors are important for biodiversity to remain high? Well, we need a diverse ecosystem, and it must remain undisturbed and sustainable. Evidence suggests that ecosystems with greater biodiversity are more likely to provide ecosystem services reli reliably. Resilience is the ability of an ecosystem to remain functional and stable in the presence of pressures or disturbances to its parts. What do these graphs show? Well, a graph um, that gr the graphs show that um, greater biodiversity in an ecosystem results in increased plant coverage. So that would be graph A. Graph B shows that a higher population of invasive species, the lower the plant species diversity. And C shows that the severity of plant um, diseases decreases as the species diversi diversity increases. Threats to biodiversity and sustainability. Human activity often threaten biodiversity. Deforestation is a practice of clearing forests for logging or other human uses and never replanting the trees. Wetlands are often drained for farming or for building homes and commercial buildings. Alien species are species that are accidentally or deliberately introduced into new locations. Over exploitation is the use or extraction of resources until it's depleted. Name some examples of invasive species um, that have affected Nova Scotia. Well, we have Japanese knotweed. Um, lacy crust bryzone and the European green crab. So let's look at section 8.1 review. Ecosystem services are the benefit 
sustainable ecosystems provide provide that are experienced by organisms, including humans. Forests influence the climate change and play a vital role in the regulation of watersheds. Wetlands provide ecosystem services, including habitat for aquatic organisms, water filtration, and erosion control. Insects provide critical ecosystem services of pollination. Visual beauty and spiritual appreciation are two services that ecosystems provide for humans. Ecosystems with higher biodiversity have higher resilience. Threats to biodiversity include deforestation, draining wetlands, the introduction of invasive species, and over-exploitation. The shift is on attitudes, actions, and empowerment. A paradigm is a view of the world or a way of thinking about how the world works. A paradigm shift is a significant change in the way humans view the world. Use figures on the left to explain the terms of paradigm and paradigm shift. So if we remember from grade 9, the geocentric model idea in figure A is that the Earth was the center of our universe, and the stars were outside, and we went the Moon, Mercury, Venus, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and the stars in the furthest section. Then we have the heliocentric model, um, which was developed by Nicholas Copernicus, and it's a model of our solar system. Um, this model was shown to be corrected by scientific community, and it caused a paradigm shift in thinking about the structure of the solar system, with the sun being the center of the solar system, followed by Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. Paradigm shifts. There are many examples of paradigm shifts throughout history. There is often resistance to a change in a paradigm. What are some examples of paradigm shifts that have occurred throughout history? Well, a shift from the geocentric model of the solar system, the heliocentric model would be an example. Also, the shift of the belief of spontaneous gener generation, so living things coming from non-living things, to now it's understanding that living things come from living things. We also have the shift from the belief that the continents and ocean basins are fixed position um, to the theory of continental drift and plate tectonics, which is shown, shown below in the picture. Um, what are some examples of paradigm shifts that are occurring now? Um, well, the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment, amending phosphorus concentration regulations, Nova Scotia's Climate Change Action Plan, and establishing um, Ukrainian in Institute of Natural Resources. These are things that are going on now. You can see more in Table 8.2 on page uh, 337. Outcomes of the shift. So what happens when these shifts occur? Well, we have change in public policy, legislation, and sustainability. Worldwide, governments on all levels rely on scientific findings to make decisions about public policy and passing legislation related to sustainability. What are examples of public policy or legislation regarding sustainability? Well, these would include things like Nova Scotia's non-essential pest Pest Control Act, the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement, environmental farm plans, replacing highway light, to bulb, light bulbs with energy efficient light bulbs, idling control signs, bylaws like we see outside our school, banning the importation, sale, and advertising of baby bottles containing BPA. And you can see more in tables 8.3 on page 343 and Table 8.4 on page 344. Self-education. Educating yourself about how products are made, whether they are environmentally, economically, or socially sustainable, is an important part of individual empowerment. Fair trade is a trade practice that is based on the concept of transparency in business and sustainable development. A product's life cycle includes all aspects involving 
involved in making, distributing, and selling, using, and disposing of product. How are product life cycles and sustainability related? Well, at each point in the product's life cycle, unsustainable practices can occur. It's important to look at all points of the product's life cycle to determine if the product is made, used, and disposed of in a sustainable manner. Our actions can be maintained or rebuild sustainable ecosystems. Some human activities can help ecosystems provide boxes or places for birds to nest. Use um, smart growth for urban planning. Provide um, preserves that maintain natural habitats for organisms. What are some examples of human activities that have helped ecosystems in your community? So we have our own waste disposal. So disposing of waste in a responsible way. We also have reforestation that happens um, after there have been um, clear cuts, as well as we have preservation of habitats. So we have Kedji Kujik um, Park, which is just around the corner, as well as we have Brar Island, um, it's a biosphere reserve. Um, so there are lots of places in our local area that are maintaining and rebuilding sustainable ecosystems. So let's review. A paradigm shift is a significant change in the way humans view the world. There are many examples of paradigm shifts throughout history of science and technology. Our society is in the midst of a paradigm shift regarding the way we view sustainability of ecosystems and the use of resources on Earth. Evidence of the shift can be seen at the international, national, provincial, and local levels. Outcomes of the shift can be seen in a public policy legislation such as passing of pesticides, bylaws and island control laws. Individuals can be empowered to make changes by learning more about products they purchase, voting, joining advocacy groups, or volunteering to be a citizen scientist.